Uh, this is normally a combined uh, finance committee and select board meeting. Um, possibly the selectmen will be trailing in short. Um, currently we have um, finance committee um, is pointed in the direction of looking at our tax rate. And our tax rate right now is fifteen dollars and sixty cents sixty seven cents a thousand. And one of our goals is to hopefully hold it in that range and give the residents of this town somewhat of a relief from excessive taxation. So with that said, uh, let's open up the meeting. And to start with, we will um, approve the meetings of the I make a 21st. Motion. I make a motion we approve the minutes of the January 21st. Second. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Done. Okay. We have, uh, we have a number of budgets here tonight, a number of individuals who will, will step forward to uh, explain their budgets and defend their budgets. Um, and first on the list will be public safety. Um, and in there will be fire departments up first. John, come on down. <coughs> Sir, why don't you give us a little overview of your a copy? Of it. We have your budget yep. in front of us. Yep. Um, is there anything that you we would do like? We do capital first, like yep. normally, or yep. Okay. I have one cap. Well, actually, I have two capital requests this year. Do you want to report on last year's, or do you want to just like jump right into the one sort of? If you're ready to talk about last year's budget and what you did with it and where you are with it, that's fine. Well, I was referring to the capital. Okay. I had two, budget, two line items on the capital budget last year. One was a load of hose for engine, my engine four, which came in and it's all been loaded and it has not been on the ground since we put it there, which is a good thing. Um, change all, I want to change, the project was to change over all Pumper all the engines in the, in the station to five inch hose. Doubles the capacity of buying <coughs> wire for the hose. <coughs> capital plant, capital plan is to do another engine this year for the, <coughs> just short of $14,000, which is at a capital request. Um, and <coughs> after many, many meetings, we actually got this fire station sited. And it, it does look good. It does thank look you. very good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, that's because of the color, I think. I don't know. Whatever. Didn't hurt? No. Um, it came in just over budget. It, I had to use some money out of my budget to uh, finish the job. To pay the electricians, I guess I didn't figure the electricians were going to cost as much as they did to get the job done. So, that being said, we'll. And, Want to budget the line items? I don't need. I don't think I need to explain. They've always been, been the same as they. They don't change very much. It's true. Um, and I level. I at some of these requests, I level funded my budget request for this year. Um, I'll go around. Anyone have any questions regarding um, John's budget? I had one. Uh, spent just under twenty thousand year to date through January in your general expense budget mm -hmm. out of 63,000 or so. Year to date, today? Yeah. Oh, okay. If you say so, so. That's, if you say so, I don't, I didn't that's, know. That's what the statements reflect that we were emailed, and that we're emailed to us. So it's like 30, 31% of the total year's budget. We're about 60% of the I didn't, I'll be honest with you, I didn't look at any of them. I didn't think we were doing this year's budget. So, well, I'm trying to understand why next year's budget is higher than this year's when we've only spent 20000 this year. I'm trying to understand what, what's going well, to be spent. Probably because I'm a couple months behind in payroll, for one, <coughs> and 
Because that's the way it is. That's just the way it is. They don't, I, I tell all my guys that they have a problem with the payroll and that they can do it or they, they, they're not getting paid. They're not making, they're to make money. Is that what he said, Tom Wayne? What? Never mind. <laughs> so I'm trying to understand why the 2021 budget is higher than the 20 budget when we're so far under the year to date pace. Uh, an actual spending this year. Well, it's been one for this year. It's all better. I'm not sure. Because spending is not, it doesn't go in proportions. Say, say you've got 12, oh, I know 12 months. He's not going to spend the same amount. I haven't had any fires yet. Thank this you is very general much. Census. This is a capital. This is general, yeah. which is payroll. And that's pretty steady throughout the year. So it, it shouldn't fluctuate that as much. I'm just, you know, I'm just asking for an explanation. That's all. One of the one of the biggest things is the payroll and they, we haven't had any fires really. We're just doing small calls, just little calls, you know, and have three or four guys. I haven't had the, the twenty guys out there working for six or eight hours. The fire prevention department works to work doing their job. I understand. It's going to fluctuate. Okay. Your your the increase is you're looking for the fifty eight sixty that we took away from you last year. You put it back in. You level funded me last year, so that's one little level fund whatever I requested last year. Not what you cut me to. <laughs> okay. All right. That's that's fine. Um. Anybody else? Bob? No? Fred? Joyce? So you're not going to get an answer? I don't think we're going to get an answer. I, I, I think that uh, the, that, um, you know, five no department one, budgets. Well, it, I think we're down the line items. No, no well, how, I, I kind of feel like Dan, I know how it works. Yeah. He's, he really doesn't have any expenses because there haven't been any fires and, or any big fires. If there's a big fire, he could his whole budget can get blown right out of the water. It's not like every month he spends X amount on salaries. It, probably to himself, but everybody else is on call. They only get paid if there's a fire. So his, you know, he may go along and not spend hardly any money on salaries, and then there'll be a huge if there's a fire. There's going to be a big jump in his salary. Normally, okay. what he'll there'll be a pickup in the spring for brush fires and stuff like that. That's yeah. Normally, when it picks up. Right. It may, you know, like it, we may be going to go through a stretch here, like he says, fire prevention is paying off. There aren't going to be, you know, we knock on wood, we won't have a big fire. No, I understand. Okay. And if we don't have a fire. And I know that we haven't been spent the like for example the line item for the boat that has not been spent. Mm -hmm. That's one of the you know. There's, Five hundred dollars or whatever it is. Twenty five hundred, yeah. Yeah. And if somehow there are no fires at the end of the year, you don't end up spending that money. It goes back to the town. Well, yeah, the school does. Just, school like, does. just like every other the school department. guesses. Is that what she said? Right, just like the school gives us back. That's one, yeah. <laughs> Anything coming up in the future that we should be aware of? Oh, yes. Um, we're getting a new going with a new radio system. It's coming in on a grant. They're going changing over to the uh, 800 megahertz system. Who's they? County. <coughs> Sorry, Chief Savine has we decided we're going to put that on the change of radios over. They're giving us rage pagers and radios, but we, it's going to cost us three hundred dollars a vehicle for the morning. And Chief Chief Savine has that. So there's, request. there's a grant coming yep. in for that. So it won't hit our budget. It will to have it installed. What's the advantage? So I can talk across it, the board. It'll be without a radio if we don't go to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Period. <laughs> well, and the advantage is maybe you can talk to a Yankee Candle. And I, I don't, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. <coughs> because the radio system we have, but they also say that it's only going to be the radio, not the paging system. So now we're going to have to, now they're going to maintain two systems. 
They figure it'll be parallel for a while until they get enough of them online. Right. Yeah, as I understand it, they're going to do it in two waves. Yeah, they're just doing uh, Franklin, <coughs> Western part, you might say. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how. I haven't been told how they're going to break it out yet. It's going up on this side of. Uh, I think the break off is. They're using a 91 as a plane field to start. So they're going to the west of 91 for the first batch, and then they'll be going east to the towns over there. So, so we don't know which batch we're in. Or uh, batch one. Batch one? Really? Yeah. Right off the bat. <coughs> the guinea pigs we're trying so what they're, as, as I understand it, what they're going to do is they're going to put new radio in all the trucks so that, for example, Sunderland comes on mutual aid call to Waitley. I can still talk to them. You can talk to them now, can't you? Yes, but we'll have two systems. They'll have new a new radio. Whether and my my guess is they won't use a new radio until everybody comes online. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. says, we'll have one that will just sit there until they put the second wave in place, and then we'll be able to talk to anybody all the time. And they'll take the, the old radios out, change up. They'll do it. The change. <laughs> We don't have, um, obviously for this year, we don't have an expense to date, though Jim did pick up that, what the um, utilization in his budget was, would you say 30%? Of yeah. I mean, we all got the same savings. Right. Uh, for me. Right, right, okay. right. Yeah. It's just that, so when I go back a little bit, okay, and I look at, so this is total fire department. Total, the total pie. Okay, so when I look at um, 2019, we appropriated sixty-two thousand two hundred eighty-eight dollars. The expense for that year was. Let me get my glasses. I, I apologize. Six, I left mine on. Sixty-seven um, four sixty. No, that was eight. So for 2019, appropriated 662 288, expense 39836. Okay, so there's definitely some room there, and I was just wondering if you can explain why the differential and what happens to the money. must have made a mistake and didn't spend it all. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if you don't spend it all, and then you're coming back and you're asking, and then in 2020, you're asked for the 62 again. We don't have an up-to-date expense for the year, but if this is a pattern, then you're asking for considerably more money than what you use, which means more money than what you need. That's what it means. Okay. So if you can, give us a reason why that happens and maybe some of it's the brush fires or yeah, some of it's you don't have the burning houses going I get it but mm -hmm. when you have overlapping years with that kind of a pattern then there should be some adjustment okay on your part right well there was last year I didn't spend okay he, he, so it, it's there. He gives it back. He doesn't spend it all. Okay. No so, so Brian, so this is, you can follow the paper trail from his budget back into the general funds? We have, we can have, yes, we have a detailed report of expenditures. Sure. We can get that for any department. Okay. And, um, fun. Just that if this patent continues, then the need for those extra funds really isn't there. But, but I think the big we'll just keep an eye on it. <clears throat> okay, I'm sure you will. It did last year. So the big drop was uh, uh, vehicle maintenance, so that's kind of an unpredictable thing. Yeah, that's right here. Yeah, it's a vehicle it's maintenance, a it's also the, the appropriation versus the expenditure for the firefighters, which has to do, I'm sure, with actually fighting fires, but the appropriation has been 13 uh, for each of the years and it hasn't gone over 10 expenditure in any years. You mean for salaries? No, uh, yeah, firefighter salaries. Right. Yeah. So
So, yeah, that's all pretty yeah. steady. Yeah, but the budget number keeps, the, pro the appropriate number keeps coming in well above. The well above, <laughs> yeah. The expended number. Right. So, okay. The note I get every year is that don't touch the salaries because they're always set by the personnel board. So. That's, what, and that shows it here. Okay, we'll okay. see that. Thank so, you. So let's talk about the utilities. You got electricity, internet, and heat. And we're appropriating the same amount every year, and we're not coming close to spending the same amount every year. You want me to tell you about the internet? I'm waiting. Okay, Bobby. I take my fire reports. The only reason I need the internet at the fire station is to do my fire reports and send them to the state. I download them off the computer at the fire station and take them home and send them to the state. That's, I mean, I can put it in the fire station, but I pretty much think it's a waste. Well, why are we expending it then? Why are we, we have internet at the fire station? We don't have internet at the fire station. We're appropriating it. We're appropriating, we're appropriating it, but yeah. we don't use it. Right. We're, you know, we're appropriating 2730 for electricity. We're spending about half of that. And the same for heat. And we're spending about half of that. You know these are appropriated if we're not going to use it. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. So. You're absolutely I mean, right. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not something that you know, it's not a lot, but it's right. Right. And these preliminary meetings, <laughs> there won't be any voting here tonight as to how we feel about the budgets themselves. That will come downstream, and um, if there's further questions or we got to. Um, get more explanation for you, then we'll go through Brian and okay. we'll ask him. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Okay. Um, within the public safety realm, <coughs> next we shall have um, hey, let's, why not ambulance? Why not? Thank you, everybody. Thanks. <clears throat> My pleasure. Uh, by way of introduction, for those who don't know me, I'm Zachary Smith. I'm the director for South County EMS, which is your full-time paramedic ambulance service. So I think you probably have the good news already. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, well, I'll, I'll cut to the bottom line just so everybody at home can let out a sigh of relief. Your assessment is going down by $676. So congratulations. Um, going over kind of the last year, you know, we continue to see an increase in call volume. That's just the nature of us. You know, if you build it, they will come. Um, population is trending upwards in age um, and access to health care. We're still struggling with that as a country, so people's only access to medical care is through 911. So we actually saw a 4% increase in our call volume to Deerfield Center and Waitley last calendar year, calendar year versus 2018. Um, that increase is still within our ability to respond to calls. We still have that one truck 24-7, and then we add additional crews during our busiest hours of 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. We did see a drop in the amount of mutual aid calls we were doing. 2018 was a little hairy. We were going to Greenfield and non u Turners Falls often because of the tumultuous uh, EMS situation up there. Um, our requests up there have lessened, which means that those resources remain available uh, down here in South County. Um, I think though the lesson there, and we all agree at the Board of Oversight, um, which is my oversight board, is that it, it, it's not to be taken that, oh good, we can kind of relax. It, it more goes to speak about the unpredictability of EMS in the county. So um, the budget that we prepared for fiscal year 21 is for consistent level staffing, a consistent level model based on what we've been uh, doing in the past. And we were able to realize some cost savings within that, which is why your assessment is going down but you can still count on the same level of, of response and care that you've 
enjoyed thus far. Um, I guess uh, just going from a uh, tip to toe on the budget, there's I think three things that kind of stand out to me the most. So I'm going to hit on those, Good. and then if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, the first one is um, we've included a uh, OPEB, other post-employment benefits line item this year. This wasn't something that we've had previously, um, and we are a town of Deerfield department because the town of Deerfield is a fiscal agent, and right now the Deerfield policy is 4% of associated employee benefit costs that they're putting away for future uh, post-employment benefit obligations. Uh, everybody kind of agrees in the Commonwealth that 4% is probably not going to be enough, but we are a young department and that is right now the guidance from the town. So we've committed to to 4%. What's your definition of post-employment? Uh, that would be a question for the town of Deerfield uh, administration, but that's going to be your uh, retirement benefits primarily. Just, just retirement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just retirement, if that, yes, if that's your question. Yeah. Um, we do see uh, you know, a little bit of increase in the salaries and wages. Uh, that's just your typical step increase that the town of Deerfield employees uh, receive every year, plus a 1.5% COLA increase as recommended by the town of Deerfield Personnel Committee. Uh, let's see, one of the major savings that we're seeing is on our billing line item. So this is actually, we, we do bill for services. So anybody who calls 911, we bill their insurance company. And we use Comstar, we've been very happy with them. They're Massachusetts based, they've been very reactive. And because of our call volume and the um, ability at which we electronically submit all of our paperwork quickly, it makes their effort much less. They reduce their um, fees from six percent down to four and a half, per, or four percent for us. Sorry, six and a half to four percent. So that reduction in in associated fees shows that our billing line item went from forty thousand down to twenty four thousand. So that's what we're estimating um, for next year. So that is a, a nice savings. Um, and the other big savings uh, at the bottom, I would say that that right there. Um, offsets, you know, the, the incremental increases on the different line items. So our expense, our expenses are actually down next year, this upcoming year, I should say. The other one is the town of Deerfield indirect costs. Um, this is hours worth of discussion. If you want to come to our board meeting, our boo meeting, basically what this is, this represents everything that the town of Deerfield encumbers because they manage our department. So all of the personnel related stuff, all the HR stuff, the benefit management, the accounting, the town accountant, legal things like that. And at our inception, uh, <laughs> the communities, the Board of Oversight actually said, okay, well, 10% of our total budget, um, we will say is related to these things. I, I'm, I'm doing a real hack job explaining this, but basically they revisited it and decided that 7.14%, um, that is the ratio of our budget to the overall town budget, mm -hmm. and it's kind of a quick way to do some math and say, well, if, if we're 7% of the total budget, then probably in the ballpark we are requiring 7% of the effort you know, in town, managing benefits and, and managing accounts and things like that. So that 3% savings on that, um, has reduced the indirect cost assessment for the town of Deerfield from from seventy three thousand down to sixty thousand. So that's another thirteen thousand dollars worth of savings. This is on the docket for the board of oversight to look at in the off season in the summer and really kind of drill down whether that seven percent makes sense. Uh, but everybody thought, you know, we're in the middle of budget season right now. Quickly, let's let's look at this because everybody kind of agreed that ten percent was too much. Um, so kind of all those factors in play means that um, the assessment is down. Uh, we're estimating the same amount of revenue from billing um, this upcoming year, $525,000. Uh, we always kind of estimate those conservatively because that is based on insurance paying. So if we lose the individual mandate or something like that, the insurance industry bottoms out, we see lower revenues there. And because we're an enterprise fund, any money that we make over that estimation goes back into the budget to offset our cost. And we actually see that um, in our retained earnings 
line item. So we're actually retained earnings because we're an enterprise fund is the money left over from previous years. We're putting $249,610 back towards our budget. So that is money that either we didn't spend in previous years because we didn't have as much personnel expenses or it was revenue from billing above our conservative estimate. So that's going back as a way to say, no, 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 this was your money to begin with. Let's, let's lower your assessment. This is a great point to, uh, to, to just reflect back on the fire department. This is the kind of thing we're looking for from the fire department that when, they, when we have a high appropriation and a low expenditure, the differential between mm -hmm. those two has to be some kind of an explanation such as this. So that's kind yeah. of what we're shooting for. I, the, the, manage, the, the finances are very easy here because we're an enterprise fund. You know, that money isn't going back into a general fund that we have to then ask a town administrator to pull out or whatever. So it's, right. it's right. very black and white, which is nice um, for us. But that, um, those two amounts, that, that estimated revenue from billing and our retained earnings, lowers the amount of money that we actually need to assess the towns. And then Waitley share, which is 16.7620430506603%, comes out to uh, $105,404. So that would be your assessment for fiscal year 21 for a 24 7 paramedic service that costs, I think, $1.4 million to run. So I think that's a pretty good deal. Yeah, I think that's really great. Um, and, uh, you know, we're always. Uh, the, our level of staffing, I'll just kind of close on this, is a, is a value judgment by the communities. You know, we decided that we wanted one ambulance 24-7 and that additional staff during the day. That's a value judgment. You know, if the communities decide that, you know, we really want more staffing or something like that, that's, that's a conversation where we can have. The numbers are easy to crunch on that, but moving forward for fiscal year 21, we're not changing any of that, and, uh, and this is the result. What's your response time to Waitley? Well, I mean, just well, uh, on, on average to Waitley, yeah. it's like just over seven minutes, um, I think, and that includes West Waitley. I mean, we're basically talking Florence, you know, at yeah. that point. Um, but we are. Uh, well, we care about West Waitley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, some, sometimes I think Conway could get to my house quick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, you know, that number kind of in a vacuum doesn't necessarily mean anything to anybody, but I can assure you as a subject matter expert working this career my entire life, that is, that is a phenomenal number, especially considering where we came from, and especially for $105,000. For dollars exactly. Yeah. Say, so just on the, um, on the reimbursement and insurance, I know last year we you alluded to the fact, God bless you, that there were, uh, that there was a certain percentage that you never collect. Correct. And yeah. How's that? Is that still in the same ballpark? Is that? A, yeah. So uh, the economy's is, better. So uh, uh, the economy's better. So medical billing is. You could take a college course on this. I, it's a lot of people fall into the trap of thinking about us as a private business, and you go, oh, if I if I was writing off that money, it meant you know I wasn't doing my job billing or I wasn't collecting. Really, how medical billing works is we establish a cost to do a run. So for, um, for a basic level call, you want that ambulance at your door within seven minutes. Um, in order to do that call for everything, we bill, I think it's 100, oh man, I'm gonna put my foot in my mouth. Let's just say, I'm not gonna pour anything, I'm gonna put my foot in my mouth. Um, <laughs> I think it's like, it's like $800. It's like $800, $850. Um, we say that's what it costs you to run, and we bill everybody that, because that is the cost to do that run. If we bill you different than you, that's fraud. So everybody gets billed $860. If you have private insurance, your private insurance says, yeah, great, that's a bargain, great. Well, who do I write the check out to? If the next patient has Medicare or Medicaid, by virtue of that being the government, they say, nope, we're gonna pay you $400 and you're lucky to get that. Yeah. And, and that's, that's normal. I have to bill the full $800, like I said, otherwise it's fraud. But when the government says, no, here's your $400, that other $400, we end up writing off. That's what those like accumulating balances, yeah. unpaid balances and eventual write-offs mean. Um, right now, um, <coughs> on private insurance, we are collecting in the high 90% of 
well, what we bill up, which is phenomenal, phenomenal. And then for our Medicaid, our Medicare insurances, we're, we're collecting, it's something like 70 something percent, which is also good. That, that, is, that is great. What that means is we are collecting basically everything we expect to collect, and we're collecting it because we're getting our documentation in, and it's clean documentation, and Comstar is doing their job. So what that averages out to is our overall collection for all insurances is in the mid to high 80%, and that's double what some communities see. Um, and that's... But I, that's great. Yeah, I, I think the take home with that is write-offs are expected, are a natural thing. That $525,000 that we're estimating is that 80% of what we actually bill out. So, so those are what those numbers mean. And, and if you hear about the town of Deerfield writing off you know, bills. That's just, it's part of the process. That's all just the accounting that's involved in that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, any other questions that we Thanks. might have? I don't even want to tell you what it costs me for an ambulance ride in Stockholm. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll, just, you'll just laugh and laugh and yeah. laugh and say, that's the chunk change. Yeah. It was, it was literally, it was $180 yeah. for the ambulance ride. I believe that. Absolutely. And boy, yeah, so Power Pilgrim got a bargain there. But they need Stockholm probably smaller than the, the district. Yeah. Yeah. Bob, did you say? Who negotiates the director's salary? Uh, my, that is between me, my board of oversight, um, and second. I am taking the 1.5% COLA increase. So that is what my. Just second. Yeah. Just to, and I, I would like to. Um, I'd, I'd like to have more insight into this. I don't. It's just some. Um, I guess within the community there is some talk about what happens with funds that go to support the building itself, rent, and whether <laughs> that what they're coming to the point. Okay. okay, and oh. where that money is going, yeah. and how that money comes back out, or does it stay with you? Or so, what's um, going on? There? So right now, the, the the building that we occupy, our headquarters building, was donated to the town of Deerfield by Deerfield Academy. We pay rent to the town of Deerfield. What are we at right now? Thirty-six thousand. Thank you. Thirty-six thousand um, dollars. That is holding steady from the previous year. That thirty-six thousand dollars will go back into an account that is designated for repairs and maintenance on that building, a stabilization fund or something of that nature. The, the rub here is that fund doesn't exist right now because the language at town meeting for the warrant article to create that, that account is coming out, annual town meeting in Deerfield in April. Where's the money now? I, that's a question for the town accountant. Um, I, that's $255,000 according to my quick math. Well, no, for, for that exists? Yeah. No, 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 because on previous years we were paying it to the fire district, the Sunderland Fire Department, and the Whateley Fire Department. What, when did we move into the new building? Last year. Uh, I think two years. Two, yeah, but I have to check on that. Here, here. Here's I see the, what you're saying. Uh, here's the thing on this, though. The, your reaction to this is everybody's reaction. Exactly, and across the town line that way. Oh, they don't think they're getting enough. Probably. No, 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 no. <laughs> there is no confusion up there about the nervousness everybody has, me included. Because when I need a new roof, or my boiler goes, or I need new tarmac, I want to know that that money was set aside. Like. I'm with you on that. That money better be there. I have full faith and confidence that that money, I do, that that money will be there. Um, oh, you're going out on a limb. <laughs> you're really going out on a limb. <laughs> I would say the, the language, we had a special town meeting in Deerfield the other week. The warrant was going, we were going to have a warrant article to create that account on this, and we couldn't get it through legal in time to make sure there was a confusion about whether it needs to be a stabilization fund or a whatever the other one is. Um, so the, the sites are on town meeting in April. So I, I, I think we can be confident. Um, everybody, you, ideally, the Jonathan money, Edwards is doing a great job at our I, boom Ideally, meetings. the money would stay in one place, so you just might need it. I, think in, the, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think in the future, you should, that 
is a, an item that we should know how much money is in there. And that's been one of the discussions at the booth, the, the building account for the rent, yep. um, that we would get reports from the town accountant as far as balances go and any expenses. I, I understand what you're saying, yeah. that the first few years we were paying it to Deerfield because we were in this fire station. Some of it, the bulk of it went to Deerfield, some went to Sunderland, some went to Wayne. The South Deerfield Fire District is a district in South, if they are not right. the town. So, so to the district. Yeah. yeah, so that was that was their money to do it. And you talked right. about how that money would go into a, some form of escrow account as opposed to their general operating. Correct, yeah. Right, right. yeah, and because we don't, we don't want the turnover at oh, free cash oh, time. Oh, we don't want. No, no, no. <laughs> and they're aware of that. I mean, yeah. and I said, I, I, they're they appreciative, and, and I, I'm confident we're going to see that more article in, in April to make sure that that account is right. there and that money is. Right, and then at some point if we get so large, <coughs> that's yeah, divide it up. But, we'll buy a helicopter or, or something. Yeah. Okay. I, anything? I, I'm here for you guys. Can I, can I ask a couple of questions. Sure. sure. I got three questions. All right. All right. All right. Um, after you spend um, the 249610 on retained earnings, what do you guys have left on that account? 249 on retained earnings. Uh, Are you guys carrying a, a balance in that retained earnings? So that retained earnings is also what we buy our ambulance replacements out of. So instead of coming here and being like, I need $300,000 for an ambulance, every year we put, I think it's like $57,000 away. And we do that out of retained earnings, <laughs> expecting that that was revenue over billing, right? So until we make these large capital purchases, that retained earnings account grows yep. and grows and grows and grows and grows. Um, I, I think, I don't have it. In front of me, I'm really sorry. It's With okay. the, I, that's an easy out. The town accountant in Deerfield can tell us exactly how much money is sitting in there. I've got a spreadsheet about what's been earmarked for the ambulance and what years we were we were putting that away. Um, it's a it's a few after this year. FY21, I think there's probably going to be a hundred thousand in there, hundred fifty thousand, something like that. I don't think it's it's getting up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're gonna have to replace. I think there's two years worth of ambulance, something, something in that. Yeah. So that okay. that's easy to find out. Will you uh, you presume my second question in terms of the condition of the ambulances and when they're gonna be replaced? Is it two years, three years, one year? Um, the ambulance replacement schedule is five. Probably needs to be four years. Um, we j replaced our last ambulance. I think it was three years ago. Um, our next replacement ambulance, we actually bumped up because we had higher retained earnings than we were expecting. And that is replacing a truck that is costing me somewhere between fourteen and $17,000 a year to keep on the road. Um, it is just, I, I just spent you know $4,700 on brakes on that thing. So um, we can't wait to get rid of that. Hopefully we'll see a reduction in vehicle repairs maintenance line item too. Um, You'll notice that's been creeping up. Um, so I, we were looking at a five-year replacement. So our newest truck is never older than five years old, our front-line truck. Our second-line truck, never older than 10. Third line going out to 15. 15 is really pushing it. That made a lot of sense when we were doing 500 calls a year. Um, we're up at 1,300 calls a year. And, and a more consistent would be closer to 12 years on that replacement. But. I mean, that depends. Once it gets out to that third line truck, the usage drops off precipitously. And the, tr the next truck that'll be there is a, is a 2010. And it's, it's running great. It's running fine. So I, I don't see any need to replace that anytime soon. Okay. Are all three ambulances in South Deerfield? Yes, they are at our building. Yep, our headquarters. Third question? Third question. <clears throat> We've been on the same emails from this individual. Um, has, been any discussion in terms of transport? So transport. yeah, so um, this is this is a really in-depth question. So the, so basically, to paraphrase, right now we are a 911 only service. So we wait in the station, you call 911, and we respond for an emergency. Private ambulance companies make their money by doing scheduled transports, right? So people who need an ambulance to get to dialysis, or they get discharged from the hospital and they go home, or they're going from one nursing home to another. 
they make their money doing that because they set up contracts and accounts and they service this one nursing home and they know exactly when to add staff. So that is a potential for revenue generation. And we thought about that, we've looked at that and we said, well, if we're paying staff to be there, why can't we generate some more revenue on the side? Um, the concerns and the reason why I'm not telling you we're gonna do it tomorrow are, our minimum staffing right now covers our 911 calls. So in order to do anything additional, we would have to add staff. And there's a cost associated with that. Now, if you can add it during your scheduled times, great, that's fine. Um, you also have the cost associated now with scheduling those transports. So you need somebody in the office who can answer the phone, coordinate those types of things, and we need to have enough capacity that when somebody calls, they get us, so they keep coming to the well. You know, if they call, and most of the time we're like, sorry, we don't have the crew, um, then they stop calling. And the third problem, and potentially the biggest problem is, remember when I talked about billing, right? And I say that basic level call is $800. And the private insurance says, here's your check for $800. In order for us to bill for those routine non-emergency transports, we have to sign a contract with these insurance companies. And typically what that contract is, is the insurance company says, yeah, we'll pay you for a non-emergency transport to the tune of $200, no problem but also your emergency calls, we're gonna pay you $200. And so that math gets very complicated. And that is something that as a lifelong public servant, I have no experience with as far as private sector, you know, private company billing, things like that. Happy to look into it. I think South County EMS and the Board of Oversight should absolutely crunch those numbers. I mean, they're out there, they exist. Um, I do know though from experience that when you take a kind of private company model for public safety, um, like in the ambulance, companies do it, but they can only do it by slashing costs. And you run into the problem that we see in Greenfield, not to name names, but in order for that private company in Greenfield to be able to stay in the black, I don't want to get this wrong. In order for them to stay yeah. profitable, basically what they're doing now is they're relying on mutual aid from their surrounding communities to basically provide that service for free for them. Um, and, you know, we are, yeah, well, <laughs> you can get away with it. Um, my gut says that, you know, we could probably make it work, but it might get super tight, but we need to do a lot more research before, you know, that's a, that's an obvious choice to make. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further questions or thoughts? Just a, a thought to add in there, um, in terms of you know, vehicle maintenance. Yeah. And such. Um, they're just coming out now on the market, but there are now electric mm -hmm. ambulance, and I can't tell you how little it costs to maintain an electric car. You sure. Got, you got to do your brakes. Sure. Every sure. ten thousand miles, or sorry, yeah. hundred thousand miles, and you got to keep that wiper fluid thing full. Did I say wiper fluid? Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, you got to vacuum it out. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It is really low, low, low cost. Sure. So I hope when that you will be keeping your eyes on the electric vehicle market. Yeah. Um, there's some places in Europe where it's it's that's that's all they do. Uh, Nissan's now just come out with one that's not yet really commercially available. You probably couldn't buy one today. Yeah. Um, but uh, you're in a perfect situation for that. You know, they're sitting in a station. They can be charging whenever those things are not in use. Yeah. And um, and you'd be in your, you'd actually be a, a, sort of an ideal application for yeah. You have a vehicles. You have a friend in me. I, I think electric is definitely the future and the way to go. Um, okay, good. Federal regulations actually dictate, triple K standards, Department of Transportation, National Highway Transportation Safety Administration, NHTSA says that an ambulance must be diesel powered and then they made an exception recently for gas powered. Um, they phased gas out and they phased it back in because of we couldn't get diesel motors for a little bit with the right. whole um, death fluid and stuff. So. I, I think that's gonna be one of the hurdles, but I can't imagine that is far off. Um, I think probably the federal government will say, yeah, absolutely, and electric too. So yeah, I hope that we can see that change. Okay. Yeah. We'll wait for the feds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are all your, uh, you say you got five 
And those are just three. Three. Just three. Yeah. They're, they're all the same level. Uh, yeah, so our, our two, we have two ambulances that are equipped um, at the paramedic level with all the equipment associated with that, and our third ambulance is at the basic level, um, and that is primarily because the, the, the times that we need a third paramedic ambulance don't warrant the cost associated with the equipment that goes on that truck. The cardiac monitor alone is almost $40,000. That's so. what I was kind of asking is, is as you phase through these ambulances, what level ambulance will you be purchasing? The the ambulance itself is exactly the same. It's just the, the equipment that is inside it. Which you can transfer. Yeah, and actually that's what we do now. When an ambulance goes out of service, we transfer. We move the equipment over to the other one. So we always we have two so two paramedic ambulances and one basic. It's physically got bays equipped for that apparatus that you do transfer. Correct. Okay. Yeah. That was my question. Yeah. Thank you. Alrighty. We appreciate you coming in, the explanation. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, we're <coughs> Great. My pleasure, guys. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Hope to not see ya. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. I finally found a job where my boss says, glad you didn't do anything today. <laughs> Perfect. Because I went to Jonathan house. Edwards. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll call Thanks. you soon. Yes. Yes. Okay, all right, all right. We are uh, so get quarter up here. With the fire. Um, I went. I mean, he's sitting there. He's, he's been in battle. So come on up. Support. Stay there. Whatever you want to do. If you don't want to move. Who you want? Wayne or me? What? Who you? Me. Oh, I Highway to pop. <coughs> okay. Start with capital if you want. Okie doke. Um, I don't know if everybody here has the information on the rubber tired excavator, but I have the same time. Do they have yes. that letter? Yep. Yes. Oh, all right. okay. Um this is kind of unique in the aspect that I, for one, don't usually like to come in asking for stuff midstream, so to speak. Um, I've always been one that has emphasized on knowing when I need something five years out and it shows up five years out yep. and then it works its way down to the current year. However, it has become apparent to us that since we were um, given the mandate that the state now is governing us as a community as the OSHA compliance and OSHA regulations that we need to change how we do a lot of things in our um, in our day-to-day -day operations and one of the biggest changes is how we work in the trenches and excavation work and that has led us to one of the first things that came about was we were we were given a grant from our insurance company <coughs> to purchase a trench box which the town had never owned before um, and that has led us to realize that the present case backhoe that we have which is a 2000 case backhoe is not capable of, of operating with this trench box. Um, the backhoe is basically one of the s smallest size backhoes um, and it will dig ditches in most cases fine. It's, it's certainly going to be slower but it gets the job done but at the same point in time it is not designed to be moving and setting trench boxes in and out of the hole. Um, so that has led us into the situation where we have a lot of um, unique situation coming in front of us also this coming season where we have many projects that are out there that definitely need to have an excavator on site such as the water merger project we will be doing complete streets where 
the con there'll be a contractor doing that, but we, the town needs to work in conjunction with um, expanding parking. We need to, we're gonna be expanding parking at the library, things like that. All these places are going to need excavator work. We are going to be um, doing work on Poplar Hill Road. The Smith College has realized that with the additional traffic that goes on Poplar Hill Road, that the conditions up there warrant the fact of it going to be paved the rest of that gravel section. So there's a lot of work up there that needs to be done, drainage improvements, things of that nature, where we're going to be needing to use this excavator. Um, so those are a few things that are really big impacts that we need this machine for, in a sense, ASAP. And again, the downside is that five years ago, I could not tell you that OSHA was going to mandate this on us. And it's just something that Governor Baker decided to do and passed it pretty swiftly. There's other, as far as an excavator goes, there's a rubber tire excavator and there's a track type excavator. Um, I, I feel in, in looking at and talking with many other the towns and around here, they're all in the same boat. Many of the towns around here already have purchased excavators or are purchasing them in this coming fiscal year. Um, and most of them are all, as far as I know, are all going the rubber tire Route. The rubber tire route is beneficial to a municipality because we have a very short radius. We're not like a contractor that may go from Northampton today to Greenfield tomorrow. That's not something you're going to want to run up and down the road with, whereas we're pretty much got a short leash. We're only got a, a few miles in any direction. So by the time we could load a tracked machine onto a trailer, properly bind it down and hitch it down, our rubber tire machine would already be on site. So the rubber tire machine is the way to go for us. Um, and so in talking definitely with the, like the water department, um, it is also a scenario where the water department presently spends money in their budget contracting for a private contractor to come in and help them out. So if we have this machine, I'll let, you know, when the wire department gets into their budget aspect, I'll let them discuss that part of it too. But I feel in talking with them that between all these upcoming projects, plus what we can commit from chapter 90, going forward and what the water department and my own budget because I, I spend money every year in my own budget using an excavator, whether it be a small one, a lot of times cleaning ditches and things like that. So um, I guess that's really it in a nutshell. Um, okay. Anybody else has any further questions on that? I'll try to answer them. Okay, we'll open it up to uh, the floor. Any questions for Keith? in regards to this capital expenditure. <coughs> One, is this the kind of equipment that could be shared between towns? I understand about having a short leash and stuff, but there are some towns that are on short leash-ish um, distance from us. Um, I won't say no, um, but I, at the same point in time, it's sort of like um, it's sort of like a front end loader. Yeah, everybody has one and everybody needs it. Um, Same thing like trying to, to wait to get it. Right. It's sort of like trying. You know, in the summer months, it, it, it's something that's going to get used fairly frequently to the point where it's trying to schedule it would be. And we already, you know, just to sidestep a little bit with the bucket truck with the. I have with Deerfield and that works out okay. However, we are have already run into situations where we all three want to use it the same day. So we, you know, okay. um, yeah. I just. Okay. And what about chances of, like if you're out there uh, needing to rent 
uh, that kind of equipment now. Mm -hmm. This is kind of what I remember from you. Uh, you have some budget for renting it. What's the uh, prospect for renting, if you bought one, to be able to rent it out to, well, our own water department for one, but maybe. Is that something, is there a market for that to be rented by neighboring towns? If they were to not be able to buy one, is that? Why would you want to rent it to yeah, somebody else? I, I, would, I, mean, I wouldn't would be in favor of that. Yeah. We own it. Because again, it's it's one of those yeah. things where yeah, fun, if you're yeah. not the operator, no, it's, it's like it's, okay. it's, it's like you saying, I'll let you let me drive your car, and I say, hey, I'm going to have a great old time with this, and I beat the heck out of it. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be seeing what's... So we don't trust our neighbors enough to do that. I'm not that I'm just saying that that's... If you drive my car once your arm is fixed, and I would trust you not to... But that's what I'm... Right, you know, you, it, but I understand it. I just understand but what But not only that, you can't reserve it. You couldn't call the town of Conway and say, we need to rent your particular machinery for these for the month of June and all of a sudden they go well okay and then the end of May comes around and they have a project oh right. sorry can't rent it to you we got to use it. and chances <coughs> are a storm comes along and hits the the region and everybody needs and it culverts need to be replaced it's, right. it's yes yeah. okay it's so it would be a difficult one yes. to share with towns and for the same yes. reasons it would be a difficult one to uh, Share and have some kind of a different kind of informal agreement for sharing such as a lease. Yeah. Yes. I personally um, read through this and I think you made a good you had a good explanation as to why we need it, the safety aspect, the OSHA piece. Um, where I have a stumbling block with it, okay, is close to the from a financial perspective only. Okay, not a need perspective is when I get to the last paragraph. In the past, we have spent money renting and hiring contractors to accomplish our needs. What kind of money? What kind of contract? <coughs> I, I'm not, I'm not okay. asking it to give me yeah. that answer. Okay. Next line. The amount of money spent doing this, how much money? How, when did you spend it? Will exceed the cost of the machine in a short period of time. There needs to be a comparative there. You need to you need to spell this out in in black and white dollars and cents. This is what it would cost us to rent. It's a, this is the work you got coming up. That, that right. was my yes. question too. You know, okay. Wow. And that, my question too also what yep. what the expected reimbursements from Smith yep. from the water department at that point? Right. What and the I numbers think, are on those? So all that together make your case yep. really I strong. I think then you know, and I talked a little bit with the water department about this. I think. Probably between the water department, myself, and Brian, we can easily we can look at each yep. of the upcoming events that we have. Yep. We can tell you how much money in each one of those is going to need. How much money we're going to need for an excavator in each each aspect. Yeah, the volume of work says yeah, it's and a good can, idea to buy it rather put than it, rent. We can put that yeah. on. We can put that number That's, down. Paper. If we get those numbers down, then it's kind of a no-brainer as to whether or not to continue to rent or to purchase. Yes. Okay. So this is leased to own that? Correct. This at the, that yes. would be a five-year municipal lease, which a, a municipal lease is basically rent. And then it's gone. So you don't own I mean, so I'm sorry. It's leased to uh, own. Lease, more like a payment. It's a lease to own. Lease right. Lease that's what I say. Yeah. So it's leased to own. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. Well, now, how big a machine is that? It's a, well, it's in metric tons, 150 metric tons, which, um, I'm trying to think of, what I'm, I, I, are you familiar with any, you know, um, how does it compare to the backhoe? Oh, God. Well, double the double the size. Is double more than yeah. Key. Yes. You're still looking at, like, the size of the one we had up there? Yeah, did the you center? ever see the one that was in the center of town that we worked on? Yep. That was, I saw that one. That was it. Same, same size. So same maybe you support that. I said, yeah. that get in there? We just demo it. No, we were in a situation where that was a demo. Um, in fact, nice. they um, they were trying to obviously sell it to me, so they were doing it as a as a demo, and they offered us they offered us a that's a price, and that would be as a used machine with some hours on it. So. I don't know when we get to this point whether that's still available or not, but it might be. 
It might be. What's the life expectancy? Uh, is that how often you use that? Yeah, I mean, I get that, but you know, you can. There are average years. In this day and age, I think twenty. Uh, you got to start with a twenty year. For what they're going to be doing with it, they're not going to use it every day. They're going to use it right. six yeah. months out of the year, twenty years. Twenty is a decent starting point, I say. Yeah. All right, I have a question. Under general highway general expenses, under equipment rental. It increased by thirty thousand. If you get this machine, is the thirty thousand going to go away? Yes. Have, yes, it has to. to. I mean, I'm preparing my budget. Yeah. If I don't, I'm going to need. Yeah. It'll go away, but it, but 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 the cost of this will, will bump right. the total by ten or so. It's going to go from the left hand to the right. Right. Well, yeah. But but the right. My, be my request, I would the. I, my request for an additional 30, I am going to, I'll put it back down to probably around the five, I can go to like five grand. Right, but then, but then this is going to be 40 a year. Mm, right, we'll get well, yeah. I thought 200 that divided by no, five as well. No. But, but you've also got other revenues. We, once, we take some, once we take our revenue that we are, we're going to take a drastic amount of money out of the water department merger money that's going to go towards it. It's going to reduce that. But that's going to be revenue. It's still going to be cash out. It's going to be forty, and then revenue will come back. But it's still cash out at forty a year. It depends yeah. on how the yeah. finance aspect wants to do it. I, I honestly think the so best way to do it is reduce the amount that we borrow right up front. Mm -hmm. You think you can you can reduce the amount you borrow up front because they're going to give you cash up front? They're going to have cash up front. On paper, in the water department, there's going to be cash up front. On paper, but not on not well, in hand. Well, but I, somewhere I, somewhere along the way this year, we have to appropriate money for the water merger. Yep. So if we reduce the amount that we have to appropriate, that was going to go to a private contractor, and then take that share towards the purchase. Yeah. But this kind of uh, the, the, these kind of discussions can only really be done once you have numbers. He, yes. has, he puts the numbers on That's paper, and, I, then, and, then, and then we just deal with that. I understand that. And we'll, by itself. We'll get that done. Okay. All right. All right. So, good. Okay. Um, so the rest of the budget, you, yep. what do you want to speak to on that? Sure. Um, <coughs> under my highway salaries, I've added a section of $5,500 for part-time labor. Um, what that entails is we have an upcoming Waitley's 250th and I was hoping to be able to get some extra staff. One of the things that I'd like to do to, I guess I'd say beautify the town is um, pressure wash, do some replacing, but also mainly is painting the, the white post and the concrete post throughout the town. Um, it's a huge undertaking. It's an awful lot, a lot of it, and that was was a suggestion along with me, my discussion with one of the select board members that we at least attempt to see if that's a possibility this year. Um, if it gets appropriate this year, it would happen during this summer months because come next June in 2021, we'll be in the celebration year already. So. So that's the only change at this point in time in the highway salary account that I proposed into the highway general expenses. Tom already obviously talked, we talked about the, the big change there. Again, I'm just, that's sort of yeah, protecting just myself if I sure. um, don't get this. Um, mm -hmm. Other big changes, um, there, really isn't too much big change in there at all a little bit more in the chip ceiling some others going down um, i'm reducing the the traffic painting down another five hundred dollars um i i know we had talked in the past about the fact now i'm going instead of painting the entire town every year i'm splitting things up and getting two years out of, it, out of painting so um, that's given me a little bit of a savings there, and even though the price continues to escalate. 
onto the winter road section. Um, well, hey, Keith, I'm sorry, can I just ask why the operator is getting a bump and nobody else is? Oh, I'm sorry, the, yes, that's a good point. Our personnel or our policy says that operators in your one, year one to three is a certain amount of money. After three years, you bump up a little bit. So I have one operator into the middle of this budget will be bumping up a little bit, and that's why that change is there. Um, and that will also be reflected on the operator. Did I miss that? No, it's up. Yeah, I got that on the 20. I mean, on the request for 21, that bumps up a little bit for that one operator, $372. As far as the, the materials go, um, increase the salt again. Um, I did a 5% and the reason I just did the 5% is that is, that's the percentage that my salt went up this from last fiscal year to the current year I'm in. Um, as you know, that's a number that, it's a target that I try to shoot for. Um, I just again the percentage that I went up is what is yeah, is the percentage, percentage that that material went up for me last year. As far as the the sand goes, um, a little bit of an increase there, four hundred dollars, which looks like a lot at twenty five percent. Again, it's just trying to reflect on getting a handle as to what we spent in the previous years, which was in two thousand nineteen was twenty two hundred dollars. So. Um, just trying to get it more or less in line of what my expenditures were. And other than that, um, oh, that's about it. So uh, the sub-material goes up a little bit, that's it. On to road machinery. You got a big change there too. Um, we have, I know we've been in this in the meetings before and we've been in the situation where I had a 2012, a 2015, and a 2017 dump trucks. And if you look at my appropriations, I have been level funded. I believe I went back to 2011, and it's pretty much been a, a level funded for over um, 10 years. One of the big reaping benefits was that, you know, the most expensive pieces of equipment we have to maintain are my dump trucks. Well, the reality is set in, and my 2012 has cashed in this year as far as needing money. Um, we had engine issues with it, and I spent over $10,000 to get the engine taken care of, and at the same point in time, I thought that was outrageous. <coughs> told me if we had gotten water or the coolant into the engine it would have been a lot worse so um, the reality is that now that these trucks are showing their age while I don't think it needs to be replaced it's certainly going to start to need and I just heard like Zach talking about spending Twelve or fourteen thousand a year on an ambulance. I'm looking at needing to start to spend that kind of money on keeping my dump trucks going. So I've right asked ten thousand on it to buy another hundred and seventy thousand dollar truck. I agree. At this point in time, I totally agree with you. And that. so I, I like I had a conversation with Brian. I said I'm only going to ask for an extra five thousand. These kind of expenses when. When something happens, it's ten thousand dollars. I don't want to just say I want to add ten thousand to my budget. I'd rather have that hit and then come back to the to you and say I was this no way I could expect this. And instead of me asking for like an additional ten thousand right now and not needing it, I, I, I can't. Though I, I do wonder whether we should have a conversation about putting some money in capital stabilization because yeah, we know it's coming. Well, yeah. yes. Or yeah. add it to the, we already have a stabilization fund for yeah, the vehicles. vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. We have, well, whatever, whichever stabilization would be appropriate for the vehicles, but. Yeah, we have a fund. What's that? We do have. 
I know. I, I'm saying adding to it. Yeah. yeah, adding his his machinery right. to that. Yeah. Right. So I mean, it, we're at the point now where my expense I am in the negative by three hundred and something dollars, and that basically was um, what I had told Brian where I'm at, and I feel at this point in time can get by with, I'm, I'm gonna shoot for, try to just make it with 8,000 more. I, I, I have no idea what I'll need, but. Um, so that's where I am with the, the machinery account. Um, okay. other, other than that, the rest of the items are level funded. On to my garage maintenance account. Um, dropped the cost of training and physicals a little bit, because I wasn't spending the amount of money that we had appropriated. So there's a net reduction of 200 in there. And on the tree section, I have increased the outside contracting. Uh, the cost that I'm, the rental, that does <coughs> basically give me um, about four, four days of a bucket truck and, and a stump grinder and that's eats up my entire budget four days a four days with a contractor which is for a year yeah 16 hour days yeah. nope no nope an eight hour day um, and so again the the tree budget when you go back in history it hasn't really gone up that much and yet the contracting has um, so that's where i'm at with that uh, the old water department truck is going to go to the highway department. As, yes. Are we paying for that? Um, we, we had appropriated ten thousand dollars at the last last year's town okay. meeting to to, re, to to give the money to, to the enterprise. Yep. There's a proposal on the on the table as part of the excavator as the water department will lead into, but it, it's a three quarter deal. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's in other words, the it, in other words, the there's an appropriation of 10,000 there that can that could potentially go towards the excavator and that not have to put it into the enterprise fund. Um, but yes, that will the, the 1999. Green water department truck is gonna is going to go to the happy have, hunting ground. Um, going up on and it's the the old water department truck is presently getting some repairs done to it before it gets turned over to us, and it seems to be taking a little longer than if you've noticed it parked. Well, I have it. noticed yeah, it sitting there for that. quite some time. Well, okay. It's as soon as it's completed. It will become possession yeah, of the highway department. Yes. Correct. Very good. Any All right. other questions? Uh, I actually have one more. And, and it may be more directed at both the fact that maybe personnel hasn't met yet. You? That's why we have a zero percent right now. Right. Yeah, there's no no line no, item. I was gonna say old school. Pretty not nice to our employees. No, no, that's no. that's our standard we tread operating procedure with our budget. We for yeah. we Put a zero. It's a whole different. Right. And then that number gets plugged in later. Right. I just want to make sure that we're being mindful of the employees to do a great job. Okay. All right. Thanks. We do have electric dump trucks, by the way, but they're mostly for mining industry. So these um, rise up with the electric dump trucks. I'm assuming you read the newspaper. Did you see how much the new buses were going to cost in Amherst, the electric ones? Well, they don't ever have to maintain them. The cost of ownership is so no, they much They can't afford them. Don't be saying you don't ever have to maintain them. Yeah, I was going to say. Very, 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 very little maintenance. When, when buses do come around, we should be looking at having half buses as opposed to full buses. Right. Because right. we don't have the students. We don't have the students. We have the full buses. The yeah. state so says we have to have. The moped buses. Yeah. Well, All right. All right. Thank All you, right. Keith. Thank you. Thanks, Keith. All right. And. Uh, it's time Wayne. for the Enterprise. Sorry about being last, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs>
Keith came in with them. Yeah. <laughs> He came over the air slam and he yeah. really got the sympathy. So. Yeah. And he never explained it either. Which you think it was a prop? He's taking it off. You think it was a prop? Definitely. Could have been a prop. Okay. It worked. All right. Okay. All right. Enterprise Fund. Tell us what you need to tell us. Capital this year we got, as Keith was explaining, partly pay some towards the excavator if that happened. Then the only other one is five thousand dollars for upgrades to the Westbrook booster station. Okay. All right, so the regular budget it increased a lot, but that's just mainly because of the center of town project. Yeah. Other than that, everything else is pretty much the same. We lost. We don't have the payment for the water meters anymore, but that kind of got moved around to other stuff. The five grand went to the for the payment for the filters, the Nike's filters I got bust put in. We got I think this is the second to the last year to pay for monitoring the muscles down at Mill River. There's one more coming up. I think in three years or two years. And we put $3,000 towards, we're getting an asset management software to keep, it's kind of a DEP requirement to keep track of all the money, the capital stuff, all our assets, how old it is, what it's gonna cost to replace, the life expectancy of in. We're gonna be able to GIS map all the main valves, the hydrants, the gate valves to the houses. Who's gonna do that? Huh? Who's gonna do that? You're looking at him. <laughs> He's gonna do that on Saturday yeah. when basketball is done. <laughs> a lot of it's, like a lot of it is done, like a lot of the spreadsheets and paperwork we do now is actually However they do it, we just kind of send it to them and it kind of gets integrated into this software somehow. It's already there now, basically. Yeah, a lot of it, yeah. Okay. Other than that, there's real, real big changes besides we're looking at, they want to up my hours to 30, from 20 to 30, but that they got a letter in with the personnel committee. Other than that, everything else is pretty much the same. Do we have any specific questions for Wayne regarding the budget that was before us? Is the manganese situation all set? Yeah. Okay. Not done with project yet, but yeah. Okay. The filters have been on since late October. In the center of town, the center of town project will get going. Eventually, yeah, yeah, hopefully this spring. This spring. <laughs> They're in front of Cop on the 19th. Yeah. For the, okay. Uh, weapons permitting for the site. And all these costs, obviously, are offset by the fact that those that participate in the fund pay for it. So, right. what's that? The enterprise fund. Yeah. yeah. It's. When this merger takes place, it's backed by the users yeah. of the fund. Yeah. So um, I don't have any no. questions or, or issues. Pretty straightforward. It's straightforward. Um, kind of self-explanatory. And uh, um, are we good? I'm good. Brian, you good? I'm good. Yeah. Everybody, wait. <laughs> so, sorry that you will last, but we got a very good film. Thank you. Wait, if you want to spend more time here, you should put it in. I do. 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 Brian, do you have something to sign? Yeah. Send that around. Um, 
but this is a reserve fund request that we had talked about at the last meeting for the road machinery count that we just talked about. I'd like to uh, I'd like to make a suggestion, seeing how we're all together here, to see what people think about it. Uh, the fire department budget. Okay, I think John does a great job as the fire chief. Okay, I mean, uh, you know, he's, he's part of the town. Um, it's obviously doesn't like doing that part of the of his job. Not at all. Okay, doesn't like it. Doesn't do it well. And and he knows it. You mean the administrative part, right? Yeah. The budget. The budget part. Yeah. Can the town do something to help him out, rather than ha rather than us sit here and hammer and, on him? Right. Now, I'm not going to do this again. Um, so the so the town needs to, we need to come up with a solution so that it helps him put the budget together so that we can clearly understand where his expenses are and that. We can then present it to the town, yay, nay, or go away. Um, so that's 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 why. Well, he needs clerical really help, is. just like the water department does. Right. They both need clerical help. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I, I I guess, but you know, Wayne's budget is pretty. Right. It's, it's not as complicated. John, John does complicated. understand that if he gave us a realistic budget. Yeah. and there was a big fire or there was a series of small events which you know cost him a lot of money he can come back and get more Absolutely. money but it, 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 John, it's not just the budget either. You heard him say that he's behind on payroll. He yeah, just doesn't yeah, like doing the administrative yeah, stuff. And my guys know that. Yeah, yeah, well, right. 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 It's just not good. good. Right. It's just not good. No, no, no it's not good. So, and, it's not and, just budget. And the reality of it, maybe he doesn't have to do that. You know, maybe that's that that should. Maybe there's another person in the department that's real good with numbers and, and could help. I don't know. Does I don't get. But with, with his age, will he be our fire chief that much longer? I have no and idea. And a new fire he's chief been, have he's this been class? Through, but no you're idea. Gonna, you're going to get the yeah. same thing with the next person. But we. Uh, I have a question for you. So they got a grant for the center of town to dig up the road and then repay that. What do you think? How much of an impact do you think Black Hop will increase on that job? How much more do you think it's going to cost the town to do that job? A lot. Black Top is in place. Black Top is yeah. expensive. That's, that's I, you know, sitting they're talking about doing this in the center of town. I just see that expense like going. I, I, well, before we get to that, before we get to that, we're still yeah. talking about the fire department in the situation with you the, have to get John Clerical help if you want. But well, we didn't close that down yet, and you jumped in. Just I just I think I, the, the solution to John. Okay, so what is the there? But and I could see that for six or seven years. There's a cost to that. There is a cost yeah. to that. The the question is, what's the cost for the way it's happening now? And there is a cost to and that. Of course well. there is. <coughs> of course there is. Does John get paid? He doesn't get paid extra for the administrative stuff. He does. His salary is a salary. No, it's, right. salary. it's included in the job description, I would imagine. Right. Well, but maybe it's not. You better check that. I don't know that. Is, what's his job description? I would imagine that it is. Do you think? Yeah, I would think. Or maybe he would take a deal then to take a salary cut if he doesn't have to do uh, a budget work. Uh, uh, and to offset the uh, cost that. that would come up by having to, I don't know, hire Amy for more hours or for whatever the solution would be. To make he needs a book. Work. Are there other right departments now. that have the same struggle? I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm just asking. I, I don't think so. I don't know. I think that if anything, John, and then I would go John Wayne, and I think he is, has his completely under control. Or, but when it comes to like clerical help, I would definitely say it would be John, and then Wayne, and then Wayne. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, my opinion is that he understands his project. Well, I'm assuming he's the one who did this, but I don't know. This is how it was given to him. I mean, he w he went in and he put in the expenses for 2019. It's just, is there a willingness to? Is there a willingness to go to look at these and say, okay, I could use less? Because I am not willing to stand on town floor if somebody gets a hold of this paper and, and says he keeps he's appro he appropriating sixty thousand dollars a year and he's spending thirty sixty thirties. How, where's that other 30 going? Those and back in the general fund. Well, I know, but 
The big one, one is he, he can't answer the question, right. what did you right. spend it on? Why right. do you keep That's asking for no that? Answer that. And, and there's look. nothing wrong with having excess capacity in the budget as long as it's what you thought you were going to spend and you right. didn't, good management. See, he right. does the Keith opposite of what Keith does. Keith, right. Keith, Keith, this is why. Keith knows he's going to need more money for uh, truck maintenance, right. but he's not asking for it. He's saying, I'm, I'm going to scout by and to get by you. And then I'll come back. Where John's asking for it up front, and he's not going to use it. Right. Now, Dan will probably agree with me. You've been around about as long as I have. Long places. Long. Yeah. His father was the same way. Randy was the same way. Yeah. Jimmy Bernier was the same way. It's that's why I didn't say okay on that question you asked. Is it in his job description? Yeah, I, okay. I don't because know. Because it has been happening for the last 40 years. 40, 40 50. Years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So maybe uh, there is a problem there. Maybe, maybe there is. But it may be in his job description. It may just, not just be him. It may not be. Okay. Not, I'm not. It's I, a cultural I, I thing. Whether it's in his, specifically in his job description or not, it, we certainly expect department heads, of which he is one, to submit their budget. That's a person. Okay. Or, but it's uh, also perhaps an unwillingness for to have oversight over a department head. I mean, you know, it, it's having, and I missed his presentation, but you look at it. No budget is zero, zeroed out or flat every year. It just means that you're just it means you're cutting and pasting. Number. Yeah, yeah. You cut and paste and you, like you, He's right. been offered help by, well, you guys probably know, but it and doesn't want to accept it, so I don't know. Well, it's not his choice. Yeah, maybe that, maybe that role is re removed and yeah. maybe we have an individual part-time person who comes in here who works with John once a month to take a look at the numbers. And, and does at least does his payroll. At least does his and payroll. And does his yeah. payroll and, and, and does all that. And pay, I, you know, if he's not doing payroll, I don't know what bills aren't getting paid on right. time. Yeah, what other bills aren't getting right. paid on time that we're paying interest on or something. Or, or that we're, we're getting, no, or, or they're just getting, you know, a bad rep with yeah. whatever. Right. I, I think vendor payment is not an issue okay. as far as we know. It, it's it's the payroll and figuring out how many hours each person worked and getting that stuff submitted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does he have he has software obviously that helps him do this, right? He had old software and we got him new spreadsheets, which I think may have helped recently. But if it hasn't been submitted for two months, then <laughs> maybe not. So we don't know we don't know how many hours this should take. No, we don't. No. That's, we have, we should know that. Well, it might take, it might take you an hour and it might take him six. Well, this is sort of my point. I mean, if it's done properly, how long should it take? And that's what you have to go by because you can't have a function that's supposed to take two hours take 10 hours because it's just not good fiscal management. I would, uh, I would think we probably should start with, he should have a, I'll phrase it this way, a refresher course on how to enter data into the spreadsheet. Well, I think he has recently. He has had it? Yeah. <laughs> well, least somebody, that's he needs a... And it's still not? Right. And it still didn't sink in. I'm not sure. I'm not... The answer to the question is yes, that, that discussion has happened. Okay. All right. Here we have... In the next... We, probably the last we have a department here. that's extremely important in town. Yep. We have a guy that does a great job mm -hmm. in, you know, dealing with... <laughs> apparatus, yeah. the building, the guys that work for him, all that kind of stuff. He's just not that up to speed in this one particular area. And there may be other departments that are just like that. <coughs> the same thing. And it, it may behoove us to have a professional come in to work with three or four departments. And maybe over time, they take all the departments. And all the department budgets go into one person, they crunch all the numbers, these guys come in, tell us why they need it, and then, but all of those dollars go some, all, all of the information go to somebody else, and they present us with, here's what it costs you to have that department run last year. Can't, we can't afford it, but that's a budget. I don't think so. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure of that. I, I, I don't, I mean, we'd have to look into that, but, um, I think it, it, but we start small. We start small. We start with one. 
we got to start with education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fine Whether he's right. been presented and it didn't sink in, he's got to be educated. To do it, period. I think yeah, it's the accountability. Sure it's I don't, I don't think it's the education. I think he knows how to do it. He doesn't want to do it. He doesn't, he doesn't like to do it. Do it. And it's yeah. not our job to tell him. It's our job to make sure the numbers are good. And right now, what what we're saying is numbers aren't so good. Personnel can do his job to tell him. No, no, no. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I think it could be the personnel committee's job to go look at the job description. And if yes, true. That's, that's true. part of the job description, job and description. it's part sure. of the job, if it's supposed to be part of his job that he's not doing well, then who he reports to, then it becomes a part of the conversation for whatever the next, I don't know if he's on contract, but he's you know, the conversation of when, they, when, you know, when everyone gets assessed on a yearly basis, yeah. right? Right, right? So that goes in mm -hmm. there and then then maybe you start, maybe he would just be relieved to not have to do that. Maybe. And if we took, I don't know how much money from his salary and took that out of his job description, he'd be just as happy if that's really the case. It's, and maybe if, if not, peanut. it could right. be that people that he would say, no, I really want to learn how to do this. Now, I understand how important it is because that you're willing to pay for his salary. Mm -hmm. And then if his salary is like our salary, <laughs> oh. then, it, then yeah. it won't be much. But but it, I think there's we sort of have a process that we no, can. It's not much, right? Yeah, he gets yeah. seventy five hundred a year to be fire chief. Right. Yeah, I, I mean it's not. Take that away. No, yeah. you're not going to take that it's away. It's not a. That's, okay. That's right. I, I, Absolutely. You, know, you got to address right. the okay. issue and to to address the issue in in my view, it comes down to having a professional mm -hmm. uh, help. Right. Take over the budget. Kennedy, uh, that to pop. Right. Yeah, but it's not like the highway department where those folks are getting more than seventy-five hundred dollars a year to the highway department. Right. So, so it's, it seems no like it's not broken there because we have the people who are earning a living wage. Yes, and a full and it's yeah. a full-time position. It's a full-time position. Full position. And we also um, right. But it's, it's still not just yeah. budget, it's the administrative. Right, uh, right. Yes, so, the, but Paul said budget before. I've, it goes right. beyond yeah. just budget. It's, it's the administrative right. burden that is placed upon a very part-time employee. Yeah. Could I um, just jump in for one second? Um, the business portion of this meeting is over. This meeting is adjourned. Motion we adjourn. Second. Okay.